movies. And uh, from the image of the book up here, you probably know what we're talking about. That's right, Vampire the Masquerade. I'm here with my good friend, Mike. And uh, of course, I'm Zeno Damus. So let's, uh, let's get this started. I mean, uh, this just came out, I guess, uh, about a week ago now. But looked at it, and I have not touched vampire in oh 10 15 years so that recently <laughs> i i say that as someone that's it's been a, at least 15 since i've played vampire now i've played world of darkness i've done mm-hmm. changeling i've done uh mage but i haven't touched vampire since the first masquerade book oh wow yeah no um yeah, Vampire Masquerade, which was uh, the, the second edition. I think we also had the uh, the revisited or revised. The revised, where yeah. they, they tried to clean up the rules a little bit. Which uh, I think I had the revised books. Um, but other than that, like I looked at some of the other World of Darkness vampires that came after that. Uh, because I'd, I'd gotten out of role playing for a while. And then when I came back, I was like, oh, there's new these new books. Let me let me pick them up and and check them out. And then I sat them back down. And that that's pretty much what happened with me. You know, they brought out Dark mm-hmm. Ages, and I was like, if I'm going to be riding horses, wearing armor, and dealing with castles, there better be wizards and dragons and elves, because I'm an old school D and D player. Yeah. And then they did Requiem, and I got as far as looking at the clans, and I said, Oh, Bruja's not a clan anymore. We're done. <laughs> well, and it, wasn't, it wasn't just that either. They changed up the rule system enough where I really didn't care for the rule system. Because, like, as far as setting goes, I can modify stuff with the setting relatively easily. But the rule system is the core yes. of, of, of the book, you know. Um, I don't I don't really need the book to make up stories. <laughs> and how often do we actually use the books for anything other than the rules? Yeah. You know, it's just, I like the book because, oh, well, I have this guideline. All the players are on the same page with mm-hmm. these rules. You know, I don't have to worry about going through and saying, oh, well, this is how we do this or this is how. Okay, you know, I can house rule a couple of things, but this is the core rules. This is what we're going with. And if those are faulty, then this, that kills everything. It's, it's the downfall of a lot of systems. Yeah. If the... If you have major problems in the rules, no amount of house ruling is going to fix it. You might as well build your own system. Yeah. And so, well, enough of the fluff. Let's <laughs> uh, let's get down to business. Uh, this is a Vampire the Masquerade uh, V5 review. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking at the book. And uh, well, so let's, let's, let's start talking about that. Well, um, well, yeah, let's start with the book itself. Yeah. The, the, the book is gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to to show too much of the book because I don't want to get any kind of uh, copyright and stuff thrown against us. There's a lot of photography in the book, a lot of really nice artwork in the book. Uh, The way the book is written, you'll see here, they have a lot of lore, stuff like that. Yeah, the first like 40 pages is all letters and emails. Yeah transcripts and things so it's it's really from the moment you open the cover they're telling a story but yeah then i mean i love the the the, the photography in it and like i said i'd I'd show you every page of the book if i thought i wouldn't get sued (laughs) um (laughs) but let me uh for one thing let's let's go ahead and get into the clans obviously your your complaint, <laughs> Bruja. I, I'm sorry. I I like the Bruja. Um, but another cool thing that they do with each of these clans, and I like it. I've actually seen some complaints online about uh, the, the the fashion in the book, um, but I like it. it. Gives a nice idea of you know clan fashion. I don't know how everybody approaches character creation, but when I'm building a character, I'm not just thinking about the stats. That's usually the last thing I'm really thinking about. I'm thinking about the personality, the look, how they carry themselves, what they think about, you know, the other factions Mm -hmm. in whatever world. And these pictures 
really help if you're trying to figure out what you want to do. Yeah. I think they really help go and let you go, yeah, that's kind of the look that I think I would want to well, go for. It, it fits kind of the personality yeah. and helps. Especially, especially with Vampire the Masquerade being such a storyteller driven game. Um, you know, you have that, that element, so you want that feel, mm-hmm. you want those characters, you want that style, because in telling a good story, you know, the details can can be very, very strong, you know. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I don't know how you run all of your games. I, I know how you run some of them because I'm in mm-hmm. them, but if I if I'm running a game and I have a player that describes what he's doing and it it's such a it's yeah. it's so well described. I, sometimes I, I'm like, don't even roll that that was described so well, you did it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I really like the good good stories. Definitely. Yeah. No, a, a good story is definitely worth uh, worth it. And like I said, this system is made for storytelling. Oh yes, everything um, about this is around. I'm gonna story. try to flip past a bunch of this. Uh, let's. Uh, now the 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 KDF, um, if you're familiar with uh, Second Ed, this was a companion. Uh, like I did not recognize him right off. Uh, he he reminded me of him, and then I remembered him afterwards. But I was like, you know, I I was mostly core with uh, with the second Ed. Uh, well, and they've also they've got the so. Sabat in there as well. Yeah, but I remembered them. I mean, but that, that they came up a lot as far as uh, well, they were mentioned, but they they became you know fleshed out and as it were mm-hmm. and playable later on so all of that is now included in the core book which is good um but yeah so then you go let's see we, 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 so we talked about clans we talked about uh the storytelling and stuff let's see let's let's go over to this index here um well let's talk about the rules some yeah the rules um we have we have the 10 sided die still still a d10 system uh, multiple dice Build your dice pools mm-hmm. based off of adding, you know, uh, an attribute and a skill together. In most cases, it's still a five dot system on all of this. Um, one of the things that they have changed that I really like is this also reinforces the story. Mm-hmm. Is now your hunger plays a much larger role in the mechanics? Yes, yes, and I really do like this. Uh, you. You read a little more of it than I did, so I'm going to let you uh, break it down a bit. But I, as, as somebody who's a DM a lot, mm-hmm. um, I find that very exciting as a storyteller oh, yes. because of what aspects it could bring to a game. So when you're building a dice pool, as you, you know, as you're going through the night, you're using your abilities, doing things, and you're getting more hungry. So what they've added now is what they refer to as hunger dice. So now your hunger level, whether it's say you have a hunger level of two, you're now going to do a contest or requires you to build a pool, you have a pool of six dice. You will replace two of these dice with dice of a different color that are your blood dice. Mm -hmm. They're still D10s, just a different color to signify this is the hunger, this is the beast inside of you. Yeah. And you roll, and if you have ones on those dice, or if you succeed but have successes on those dice, that actually affects your outcome and causes a a mechanical change of, well, you may have succeeded at what you were doing, but because some of your successes came from the hunger dice, the beast came out a little bit. And so, sure, maybe you got away from these guards, but in doing so, the way you did it was you ripped the throat out of one of them. Mm-hmm. And left him there, you know, for the others to find. So now you you may have attracted some unwanted attention and risked the the masquerade, but you but you succeeded. You got away. Yeah. Apparently, your phone really enjoyed that. I know. I know. But it, it it adds that extra layer of danger because in the original system. Until you 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 really got super super hungry, it didn't matter how mm. how much you know. Yeah, blood yeah. You used I, I remember ride, riding that line of <laughs> hunger quite often. We all did. 
Um. <laughs> but now, every, from from the first point you spend to wake up, mm -hmm. and and it's not so much every point you spend, but when you hit that first level of hunger, it becomes more and more dangerous for you. So it, it, it I think I'm excited. It's going to change the way a lot of people have to play. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, but yeah, no, the rules, the rules are definitely fun, but they are clean. They're very clean. They are. Um, and easy to go by, which is, uh, which is something I, I, I definitely liked. Um, let's see. What else we got? We got character creation. Let's talk about that for a bit, because that's, that's one of the, the probably most important things, uh, especially when trying to get a group together, is, uh, is that, that first initial... I mean, this mm -hmm. is this is what players first get their teeth into is this character sheet. So it can turn off a player really easily. Um, I will say the character creation rules are very simple, very easy, um, which is very is reminiscent of the original uh, Vampire Masquerade Second Ed. Um, the only thing that threw me right off and it also threw you a bit but uh is the number of times it starts talking about the relationship uh the relationship map map um and i'll, I'll get into that in just a second let me let me go ahead so i mean basically you're throwing down your clan your name all that stuff you'll get with your your storyteller to get you know your generation stuff like that work out some of the kinks you will need your storyteller a bit for the creation or at least uh some guidance from them early on well they they, they actually built that into the system with what they now refer to as session zero yeah the, well there's there's session zero as an option but also just giving the players the information is also an option uh it's really up to the dm on that Session zero takes a little longer. That with session zero, you're basically taking a game session, a full game session to create the character. And 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 occasionally, the, what they suggest is also to go ahead and role play some of the background. Like mm -hmm. maybe go ahead and role play the embrace of each of the players so that they get a better feel for why they are who they are. Yeah. Um, Which reinforces the it's heavy on the influence of storytelling. Yeah. So once once you get that uh, with your with your abilities, it's just you put three dots in this many, you put two dots in this many, you put one dot in this many, and uh, all of them will either have one, two, three, four dots. Uh, then your skills very similar. Not all skills will have a dot um, in this, but you have a certain number of skills you get to pick and a certain um, for each dot level. Um, and there's a couple of different options where that can be a little more flexible, whether you want to be more of a jack of all trades or you want to be specialized. Which gives um, you a, a different point spread. Mm -hmm. But um, after that, you have your disciplines, which comes from your clan that you chose. Um, and of course, your, your generation and everything that you've uh, discussed with your DM. Uh, you get to pick your advantages and your flaws. Uh, your flood potency comes from your generation. Now, now you said something there. They they call it advantages and flaws now instead of merits and flaws, mm -hmm. uh, which is a minor change. We and, and I bring it up because we just discussed it before uh, yeah. coming on for the stream. Um, the advantages are still merits, but they've broken it down into what into two sections in the book known as merits and backgrounds, which kind of makes more sense because yeah. some of the things are more who you are, you know, where you come from, which would be the backgrounds, and some things are more what you've done, which would be your merits. Yeah, and then you have like your 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 touchstones and convictions, which is mostly personality based stuff and um does affect things that still tie you back to your humanity, mm -hmm. which is the touchstones. So, and that's uh, that. That's pretty much the, the the basics of it. There's not a lot of math to it. There's oh, no. not a lot of, uh, you know, there's no rolling. It's all just point based, easy creation. Um, back to the what we mentioned at the beginning, which is that chart. Um, you want to once you go ahead and bring it down to the chart, I'll sort of pull up the example here and get it so, on camera in a sec. To again, everything about the the rewrite the rewrite of the system is really centered around 
stronger storytelling. The story is the central piece of everything. So instead of having, uh, like you would in some systems, uh, like we have right here, a battle map, what, you, what they want you to have is a relationship map, which is a large piece of paper on the table where you have written down, um, like in the example that you're going to bring up, in the corners are the names of the players, and then around them you will write names of their contacts and people they've run into, friends, enemies, whatever, with lines between them that show, you know, like, this contact feels this way about me, I feel this way about this other player, that you will change during the course of play to help keep it keep in help uh, keep everybody uh, to thinking about yeah. their contacts and people they've interacted with, and, whether they're actual players or or uh, NPCs. Yeah, my only concern with this is, like I was saying, the character sheet and character creation is the first experience your players get, and this map here can look a bit intimidating. Um, I don't like it. I don't really care for the system. I, it is. I, I have looked up some stuff, and it is actually a. Uh, there's several known methods of brainstorming and note taking and stuff like that that are that are very similar to this. Mind mapping. Uh, mind mapping. Yes. Um, but it wouldn't be like this. Would be something that I would I would change. I would I would not use this map. I'm I'm more of just a, I'm going to take some notes. I'm going to write down. I'll write down the relationships in my notes. I don't think I would use this map personally. Well, and and this is what really confuses me. Everything up until this point in the system seems to be about one storytelling and two streamlining the experience, removing things that can slow down gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about the the uh, what was it the three and done? Yeah, yeah. And then they introduce this, which is the exact opposite. It is a thing that is, by its very nature, going to slow down the gameplay if you're constantly having to update, you know, your relationships. Yeah. And how people feel about you. And now I've interacted with this guy, and instead of moving on in that moment, I need to stop and update that relationship line. Um, so, yeah, I don't like this, and it kind of confuses me of why they would put this particular mechanic in and, and make it so central centrally uh, referenced in all of the mm -hmm. other rules. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's highly referenced in character creation from where you, from the point you start picking your sire um, and then like you have all this link in your clan and then so you're, you're already adding to the map and, and, and doing all this stuff at the point of character creation mm -hmm. as well as, you know, your, 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 your party members, you know, on there and their relationships and all that. So... To me, it's going to get confusing. It's going to get jumbled, and it's going to it's going to be a mess. But um, that's that's my opinion on that. I, I Other mean, than that, there's nothing I really just hated about the rules. There was a a couple of things some people brought up were uh, political associations, um, but I didn't. Me personally, yes, there are some political leanings, uh, but I have never seen a piece of literature that doesn't have some political leaning so well yeah it's it's really hard to not have any at all mm -hmm. i'm and not really and, worried about that and it's all is... it's all in the lore and story stuff as well and honestly your storyteller is going to have his own twist on all that anyway so i don't I, I i did not have a problem with it and it is something i often have a problem with when it is extreme i just did not find it to be extreme in this book no, I, I actually do like that they did not do what we've seen other new publications do and try and pander and cater to being super politically correct and not offending every, anybody. I like that they started out. Um, well, I mean, they saying, started out with a line saying, this may offend <laughs> some people. Yes. You know, this is a rated R book. It actually has a rating on the back of it. It says, this is mature. This is a rated R. Um and it also says at the very beginning, hey, look, there are things in vampire lore that have religious nature. Mm -hmm. There is society, so there will be a political nature. Um, and all that stuff, it tells you that at the beginning. And honestly, if you get butt hurt too easily, <laughs> you probably shouldn't play vampire. And <laughs> Go play happy fluffy unicorns over in the corner or something, yeah, because yeah. this is not the system <laughs> for you. Um, all right, and... 
I guess uh, that that that's pretty much everything. That I will tie it up with a few things that we saw that we liked as far as storytelling goes. Uh, things that make uh, life a little easier. Um, so you you had just mentioned one a minute ago. Go ahead and uh... oh, the three and done. So mm -hmm. one of the things that they stress to keep things flowing, and, and obviously they they. They give you the option to mm -hmm. make it as detailed as you want, but they suggest that to keep the story rolling when you're having, say, a, a massive combat, after three turns, just end it. Yeah. Uh, so everybody rolls dice, but if you end up spending half the night rolling dice because you're having this big massive fight, you know, it, it really starts to become a slog. So their their solution for this is, by the end of three turns, if the, if it's not resolved, then there are a couple of uh, easy options to to deal with this, like just change the situation. A third group comes in and breaks it up, or the other team, the other side has taken so many losses that they they leave. And they retreat. They, yeah. they run away. Just find a way to to get out of it so that you can move on with story. Yeah. Even just change the venue so that there are different options, but do something by the third turn if it's not resolved. Yeah. Basically, just don't let battle last forever. Don't don't. And I mean, honestly, if you've played many uh, tabletop games, D and D, Pathfinder, how often do we go past the third round anyway? Like, usually by the third round, you you're either fucked <laughs> <laughs> or you're 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 winning. You know? Well, and but they but they have rules in there not just for that, but they have rules for uh, do a single role for the entire conflict. Mm -hmm. So what you'll do is whether it's social or it's physical, whatever, you're having a conflict, then I'm the storyteller, I'm going to roll or set a difficulty and you're going to roll, you know, so one of the two ways. Mm. And whoever wins, then we'll just tell the story, the players and the storyteller will work yeah. together and we'll just describe what happened, which makes it more fun in some cases. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, is that that, that is a way to do it. Like I said, though, I mean, usually you can see the direction. If if the battle isn't over in three turns, you can see the direction of the battle. If it seems to be a very stalemate type of battle, then as a storyteller, it's a good idea to change it up. Obviously, this is dragging on, or this is a uh, either too tough of a battle, or or you know just isn't going anywhere. Right. Throw in something to change it up. Honestly, even even if the rules didn't say it. It's as a DM, it's a, or a storyteller, or a GM. It's not a bad rule to live by. And and a lot of the good, uh, you know, storytellers do that already. But to, mm -hmm. but they they've taken it and and codified it as an actual part of the system, mm -hmm. which I like. Yeah. The other thing they added as a part of the system that I've often often done as a as a DM and GM, and I know you have as well, is uh, they they went ahead and said, look if guy has a high chance of success you know where it's more if it's double it, yeah if his dice pool is double the difficulty then, then just give it to him don't don't roll don't do all that nope. stuff which is nice because it's it's horrible when you have like a 10 and something and you're trying to drive a car that takes a three difficulty and you somehow like you're you're a stunt driver but you you managed to wreck going down a a a non crowded road. <laughs> I, I've just I've run, in, I've run into uh, game masters that sometimes do that. It's you know, uh, I've got this super high intelligence and I specialize in this particular knowledge. Do I know this thing that's fairly common? They're like, roll it. <laughs> Why did I build a character yeah. that's super specialized if I can't do the simple yeah. things of that skill? It's like, I couldn't fail this without <laughs> rolling a one. Of course, I'm going to roll a one because I, it's going to make me look stupid. Yeah. Well, and you know, I've, I, we've, I've, I've run a few games for you as yeah. well, and there were times I actually did this with your character. I said, oh, wait, your character concept was based around this particular knowledge. No, I'm just mm -hmm. giving you this. You know it. <laughs> well, Pathfinder 2nd had actually played on that too because, uh, you know, it had specializations, which you have specializations in here as well. Which they've had um, for a while. Which they've had, they, they've, yeah, they've had that in previous editions. But especially when it's a specialization, like if you're you, you, if you have a performance specialization, mm -hmm. you know, in interpretive dance, <laughs> I don't know. Um, is, then, this, is that the thing with the pole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then then you shouldn't just be bad at it 
just because you were all bad, you know, you should at least look competent right. regardless. Um, now, how competent? That's that's up to a role, you know, if it's high enough. But, yeah, if you're just someone, yeah, I can do that, mm-hmm. then, yeah, you can do it. There's no reason to roll to prove that you can do it because and, that's and simple again, enough. Co- the constant rolling is one of those things that slows it down. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know for other people, but for me, if I've got a character and I've got high, you know, dice pools or high skills, depending on the system, in certain things, mm-hmm. it makes me feel really good as a player just to be able to look at the the GM or the storyteller and just say, hey, I do this thing or I, I talk about this particular lore mm-hmm. and not and not be told, no, no, you need to roll that first. Just, just letting me go, no, my character knows this. I, I feel a little more invested in the story at that point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I think it, it, you know, it does. It makes you also just feel like your character is a real, you know, it, it helps with um, what's the word I'm looking for? Immersion. Immersion. Wonder. Yeah, that's the word. Uh, it helps with immersion. You know, definitely. So, uh, any last uh, final thoughts on this? I think we we ran over everything <laughs> real quick. I don't want to try to go over 30 minutes on this because I know you uh, you guys don't want us to just drag <laughs> out this uh, interview, our uh, review. Um, no, but I do definitely want to get a group together and run it through its paces Yeah, at, at both a, um, a weaker generation and a stronger generation. Mm-hmm. And maybe if we have some, some more opinions, come back and revisit it. But oh, yeah, no, now, it's definitely something I want to put in our rotation oh, yes. of, of gaming. Uh, because I miss Vampire, I honestly do. I mean, I, I used to love playing Vampire, and uh, like I said, it's been over a decade, and I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to to a, a good game. I am too. Uh, it's it's been a long time since I've been able to cut loose as a bruja and cause lots of mayhem. So hey, uh, well, what do you think, guys? Like, uh, if you if you bought the book, what do you think about the book? If you if you played. Uh, recent versions of vampire or used to play you know back like we did back with second and uh what it what you know are you happy to hear that the masquerade is back and uh and we've got some uh, revised rules let us know in the comments please be sure to like share subscribe uh you know tell your friends and uh support your local gaming shop uh, yes. wherever you buy the book you know our, our hobby shops and game shops they need your support and uh, you know it gives you a chance to put your hands on something before before actually getting it because you never know what you're going to get in the mail you can get bent pages then you got to send it back all that stuff uh, you know support local that's where you can meet your other gamers you can you can set up games and all that stuff you know we, we need those local shops yes definitely all right guys well thanks for watching take care